Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to A Current Affair. 12-year-old Drew isn't the first kid to run away from home after a fight, but he could be the first who made it all the way to Bali, hopping on a Jetstar flight after breezing through customs here and Indonesia. Reporter Brady Halls will join me in a moment, but first, how did he manage it and could your child do it too? It was great, because I wanted to go on an adventure. Oh, you're not going to believe what this kid's been up to. 12 years age, escaped from Australia, and then the parent was a little bit worried. Shocked, disgusted. There's no emotion to feel what we felt when we found that he left overseas. That was a week you won't forget. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> the 12-year-old boy who took himself across Australia and on to Bali. On his own, with not a parent in tow. And don't think it couldn't happen to you. So a child can have an argument with their parents and leave the country. He just doesn't like the word no. And that's what I got, a kid in Indonesia. And no one stopped him at the border. It's too easy. It's way too easy. There's a problem. Yeah. We're in our system. Drew is terrific on a scooter at the skate park, but he's really good at being a travel agent. Now, we've decided not to identify him so he doesn't get hassled over what he now regrets. He's a good kid. Just ask Linda, his nan. Oh, he's kind, he's generous, he's got a heart of gold, and um, no, there's no problem with him. He's just... He's just too intelligent for his own self at the moment. But Drew's a runner, packed his bags and left home at the age of two, but was caught at the local park. This time, he upped it a notch. Went to the airport and then grew it and let me on. Why is that? Because I didn't have a document from mum or dad. Like most kids, he can do a world of stuff on that smartphone. So after I got the money back from Garuda, I went to Qantas and then booked it and then they needed a letter from Mum. They needed a letter as well? Yeah. Now, he'd been borrowing the family credit cards to do these transactions, but Garuda and Qantas wouldn't let him travel. His separated parents soon found out about the two previous attempts to go overseas and alerted the Australian Federal Police. We screamed, we begged for help for weeks on end. And when the first attempt to Indonesia took place, we were told his passport was going to be flagged. Now, Drew and Mum Emma, Dad Brett and his sister knew Bali well. They have annual holidays there. But Drew is never allowed to be away from his family's side in Bali. It's a fun place, but as we know, it can be dangerous too. With guidance only, otherwise there's no rules. Absolutely no rules. But for these parents, their worst nightmare was about to happen. And then I looked up at Jetstar and they said it will work. Third time well, lucky. They didn't say it would work. It said I'm not an unaccompanied minor. So what didn't work on Garuda, what didn't work on Qantas, worked for you on Jetstar? Yeah. Don't worry, Nan was told by the AFP. No, this wouldn't happen. Um, it was, in you know, it just wouldn't happen. Um, uh, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't get past any of the um, airport personnel to get overseas. But it happened. They want it to go away and not be talked about, but it is going to be talked about now. With a Jetstar flight confirmed, Drew threw a few things in a backpack and grabbed his precious scooter. Bali, here I come, catching a train to the airport for a flight that unfortunately was via Perth. Sort of stuffed up because I got the deal cheap. Not to worry, he still had his wits about him. Don't go to those check-in counters, they ask too many questions. So he self-served himself. And not an alarm bell went off. OK, so when you got on the plane in Sydney, it's going down the runway and it's taking off. You're heading across the Nullarbor. You're heading towards Perth. What was going through your mind? I was like thinking, why am I doing this? But I still had adrenaline from being so angry at mum, just to not care. You see, all this was the result 
of an argument with Mum. Ever been to Perth before? No. Didn't know much about the place? No. What'd you do? Went upstairs to where, like, watched the planes take off. Yep. Trying to dodge the AFP in Perth. Oh, you thought they might be onto you? Yeah. He had to move to the International Terminal in Perth, but again, no one asked any tricky questions of him. And they just asked for my student ID and passport to prove that, like, um... That you're over 12 years yeah, of age? and I'm in a secondary school. And no one questioned you along the way? No. Bali bound, the 12-year-old, all alone, passing his time in the window seat, taking these videos of the clouds. Just under four hours later, his flight touches down in Denpasar. And then they just asked for my passport. And then they asked if I was with anyone. And I said, no, my mum's waiting outside because she lives in Bali. And I'm uh, going to meet her outside. And uh -huh. um, he goes, damn, OK. And, and he was satisfied with that answer? Yeah. And out comes a young boy, all alone, in a foreign country. No luggage except for that backpack and a scooter folded inside. By that stage, had you started to get a little worried? Where am I? I'm here by myself and I'm oh, 12. <laughs> I was a bit worried. Yeah. yeah. What was going through your mind? What sort of worries were you having? Like, what am I going to do? He jumped a Gojek bike and headed for a hotel where the family had stayed before. The All Seasons. It was reminiscent of a Home Alone movie, although he didn't encounter a soon-to-be president. Excuse me, where's the lobby? Down the hall and to the left. Just like Macaulay Culkin, Drew headed to reception and checked in. And I said my sister was coming, and I was just checking in early because she was going out. He was a sweet young kid, just like the one in Home Alone. Reservation for McAllister? A reservation for yourself. Think about it. A kid going into a hotel, making a reservation, I don't think so. And just like the movie, they let Drew in. He threw the bag in his room and hit the town, renting a motorbike. You were actually driving the motorbike around. Please tell me you had a helmet. Yeah, you did. they gave one to me. OK. 12 years old, and they gave it to you. You don't have a licence. They no. just want the money. No questions asked in Bali, are there? For the next four days, he walked the streets, did some shopping, sightseeing, took in the atmosphere. Did you touch the minibar? There was no minibar. Oh, there wasn't. OK, that's good. Did you do anything that you shouldn't have done, aside from the trip to Bali? I drank a beer. You did have a beer. Where'd you have that? At the beach. At the beach. Did someone in Bali actually sell you the beer? Yeah. They really do have different rules over there, don't they? Yeah. Each day, he's come back to his room for a rest before hitting the beach, restaurants and, well, whatever else. Did you then start to think, how am I going to get out of this? Yeah, I was thinking, how was I going to get home? And then, I don't know how, but I sent someone my location and then that's how Mum called the AFP. He'd been ignoring the frantic calls and messages from home on his mobile, but perhaps when he posted a video of his antics in the pool, the tracking device gave him up. That's when I collapsed. The, the police rang Mum with worst, the news. The worst words of my life. They confirmed he left Australian waters four days previous. The Bali boy holiday was about to come to an abrupt end, thanks to Chief Police Commissioner Wirajara. The Australian Federal Police came to my uh, office and mentioned about that issue, that we were together, uh, proceed to the All Season Hotel on the time to check, and the hotel says that there is a teenager stay in the 115 room, you know. I just went to the beach, and then by the time I got back, Conchula was there with Balinese police officer. And it was pretty big too. We had been waiting like a couple hours in the hotel together with the IFE and also the Consulate General. Then he came back from the beach. Yeah? He was in the beach when I came to the hotel. And he smiled. He's very nice. He's very cute as usual as a kid, you know. Cute 
and cunning. So I said I was going to get my stuff from the room. Yep. And I locked myself in the room. He put a chair under the door and closed all the windows. I was a bit scared about the police officer. Because he was so big. Yeah. And I didn't know what was going to happen. A few minutes later, they unscrewed the window yeah. and nabbed him. They told us, as a family, to sit tight. We'll bring him home. I keep him in a special room, in my staff room. He is not in the jail because he is a teenager. We are not allowed to arrest and then he not commit the crime also in Indonesia. True. Drew had broken no Indonesian laws. No one had a right to hold him or escort him to the airport for deportation. The AFP said we only had 24 hours, otherwise they'll let him go because legally in Indonesian law he has done nothing wrong. Consular staff stayed in the police station with him overnight, fearing he could leave of his own will at any time. We were a mess. You, you got a child in Indonesia by himself who's as savvy as him, riding motorbikes, organising his own little life over there. Mum and Dad rushed to Bali. Unfortunately, all direct flights were full and they too had to go via Perth. But once in Perth, with the clock ticking on that 24 hours, Jetstar stopped them from boarding the international flight. What they said to us, we, we couldn't go to get on the flight because we've got not a return ticket, we've got to purchase one now. And that's when my partner, my former partner said, well, how did my 12-year-old son get on a flight without being questioned and you're questioning us as adults. And we've got to do Nan that. was beside herself. And I was more distraught that things weren't moving along fast enough to get that, that child back. Eventually, sanity prevailed, with the airline forcing them to sign a waiver. On the ground, they rushed to the cop shop. What happened when mum and dad were coming down the corridor and you're sitting on that chair? It was just like them walking in slow motion. Really? I could see him through the window and he looked in, looked at us as we were driving in and I just, I think I broke. That's, I was broken by then. Did you get a smack on the back side first or did you get a hug and a kiss? I got a hug off dad. Mum didn't do anything, she was angry. We just wanted to know why, how, why, why do you, did this happen? Why did you want to leave so bad to go to Indonesia when we go every year anyhow? Um, yeah, there was a lot of emotion there. All three of them checked into another hotel. Well, you could imagine what she would have said to the staff at the All Seasons. What kind of hotel allows a child to check in alone? The boy had a very convincing story. For the next two days, he was never out of their sight. And unlike the two boarding passes in, this time they had three going out. They've been back a few weeks now, and it's starting to sink in. He was never flagged, they never done their job. If they'd done their job, this wouldn't have happened. You've got to be 18 to vote, you've got to be 18 to drink, yet you can be 12 and leave the country on your own. Yeah, that's right. And That's far more dangerous. Yeah. That's right, and to another country with different laws. So easily fooling poli our Australian police, our federal police, customs, everyone. What about those other kids that have gone under eight? What about, you know, child trafficking I'm worried about now? It doesn't kind of relate to us. You start thinking outside the box now. Do you know that things could have happened to you over there? Are you aware Don't think of that? I was realising. Yeah, because you're a smart kid. There's no doubt about it. I got a daughter who's one year younger than you and she wouldn't know how to leave our suburb, let alone leave the country and go to another one. So you're very cluey, but sometimes when you're at this age, and I say this to my children, you know, you just don't know. There's things in the world that happen and can happen to you. And you would know too. Yeah, and we see it in our jobs. You know, there's, there's bad men out there and they can do things to children, you know? Have you ever, did these things ever, th Ponder in your mind and you ever think of the dangers out there? No. You don't, do you? Kids don't. Well, we still are in shock. We sit here just thinking, how did this happen? Considering we screamed, we begged for help. Tell me you'll never do this again. I oh, won't. No. You won't? Why? Because I know that I'll get in a lot of trouble next time. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Next time, Go on a caravan with mum and dad down the coast. <laughs>
Yeah, Brady joins me now. Brady, you've got to love that kid. He is super bright, but so naughty, and he should <laughs> never have made it out of the country. No, he shouldn't have. But, you know, he's such a likeable rogue, you know. First time I met him, Tracy, he, he shook my hand and he looked me in the eye and he said, nice to meet you, Brady. And when I'd finished the day, thank you very much for everything. And that happened a couple of times. He was a lovely, lovely fella. He was a bit like that, another movie analogy, I'm sorry, but a bit like Leonardo DiCaprio in Catch Me If You Can. He was... He was likeable, but cunningly clever. Yeah, you know, really? cunningly clever. You know, I mean, let's not forget, though, as you rightly point out, he did use the family credit cards and he did Naughty. take the family passport. Naughty. That <laughs> Absolutely. And you can say it with a smile on your face. See, the passport was under lock and key because he'd tried this twice before. The passport was at Nana's place, but he tricked Nana into handing over the passport and the rest is history. What is Jetstar doing to fix its system so this doesn't happen again? Well... They were quite alarmed when we contacted them and as a result of that they've now decided to change their policy. They've put new measures in place, they say, that will ensure that this doesn't happen again. However, they're looking at several options so that it's you know, practical for parents who do use this system for, 15, for 12 to 15 year olds. All right. And what happens? What happened to the alert on his passport? Good question because you know what, Trace, you'd think that the Australian Federal Police and Border Protection, they might have dealt with things like this in the past. They say, no, we haven't. It could never have happened. When we told them about it, they said, no, we never flagged Drew. We never put an alert on his passport, even though they were actively involved in stopping him at the airport on the two previous attempts. So that's rather strange. But they've now told us that they too are working to review hmm. this system so that it doesn't happen again. But I joy, gee whiz, I hope Drew's not one step ahead of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Brad. Thank you, Trace.